In a previous video I showed you how to make an electric um, carousel as part of a fairground project. I'd now like to show you how I make um, another fairground ride, a ferris wheel. Um, first thing we're going to do is to build the tower. Uh, I'm going to use some strips of 4mm Corex, so which just clear some space here. And for the main tower we need a piece of Corex the width isn't too important, uh, this is uh, about 6 centimetres wide and I've arranged so that the flutes are running lengthwise for maximum strength. Uh, the length is quite important, um, we need a piece um, 17 centimetres long. I'll just mark that off. As always whenever using a craft knife I always use a uh, cutting mat, a safety mat and a safety ruler. Cut that across. So that's our main, our main tower, and then we need um, another piece, um, roughly the same width, but only six centimetres long. And we just measure that off. I think it's much easier to use a ordinary ruler for measuring, and then back to the safety ruler for cutting. There we are, there's our two pieces that we're going to use for the tower. And I'm going to glue these together so that the ends line up like that. There we go, let me glue these together. So that's our main tower. Um, I'm now going to glue these to the base. and they need to be glued uh, near the edge of the base in the centre like that. So I'm just going to put some glue on the end here and untangle my glue gun. There we go. And that's glued onto the to the base here. Now that's not strong enough so we're going to support that with two uh, buttresses, two right angled triangles and I'm going to glue one there and one there. So I'm going to put some glue on the short sides. Get one glued in there and glue in the other triangle. There we are. Okay, um, now to make this ferris wheel we're going to use two pairs of pulleys to make it to, to slow it down enough otherwise it will just go around ridiculously fast. So we're going to start work on the first uh, pulley which is going to run in an axle there and we're going to run the axle um, as usual with a lot of my makes that I make. Uh, we're going to run it in some jumbo straw and we need a piece of jumbo straw just longer than the width of the Corex tower, so it's sticking out at each end. We could use sellotape, that works really well. I'm just going to run some hot glue along there and carefully stick that in place. Um, we're going to use a 4mm dowel here and um, for this axle we're going to have a small pulley on it. I think um, that's the piece I should have been using. We're going to have a small pulley on one end like that and then a large pulley. So we've got a small pulley and then a large pulley. We slide that through and then to stop it falling out we just stick something on the end. I think this wheel will probably do the job. It just stops it from falling out. I might need to put a bit of glue on there. That feels a bit loose. Always keep glue well away from any moving parts. So I've just put some glue on the end just to fix it in place. So that's our first um, uh, 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 driven axle. Um, to drive that we're going to use uh, our, the usual electric motor. 
and I've already soldered some wires on and we're going to put the smallest pulley we've got onto the motor this is a P100 pulley because as you may have seen from uh, uh, other videos in this series when you connect a small pulley to a large pulley um, the large pulley will turn at a slower speed small to big slows things down so I'm going to glue that motor in there but I'm going to be, take great care to make sure that the pulleys line up with each other. I don't know if you can see that. So make sure that the grooves in the pulleys line up. Otherwise the rubber band will fall out. So once again I'm just going to put some glue on here. Could use a motor clip. And we're going to glue the motor in position. We've got a few seconds wriggle room just to adjust it so that the two pulleys are in line and we're going to connect them together with a number 18 rubber band so we put the rubber band over like that so you can see that the two are connected um, we're actually going to run this motor off of one battery let's just check that that's working okay don't really mind which way around this goes Uh, perhaps I've got a flat battery here. Let's get another battery. Should have checked that. Let's see if this is any better. There we go, sorry about that. That all seems to be working now. I think it was a slightly um, uh, stubborn motor. And uh, although that it is going around fast, it's, it's still going, it is actually going around more slowly than the motor is. We're going to start work on the second pulley, which is going to sit on top of the tower. We're going to glue another piece of straw here, jumbo straw. We're only going to have it um, sticking out a little bit on this side but we're going to leave the rest of it sticking out there we might trim that back later on but we do need a long overhang here to stop the arms of the ferris wheel uh, banging on the mechanism so I'm just going to stick that on there could you sell a tape there we go so that's simply stuck on there Another piece of 4mm dowel here, um, I think we can cut that back to about there and for this one we're going to have a large MDF wheel on one end, we're actually going to use that as a surface to glue the arms of the ferris wheel onto later on and on the other end we're going to have the second of the large pulleys. So we'll see if we can twist that on. Yes, that's going on quite nicely. And we're going to connect that large pulley to the red pulley there with a number 24 elastic band. Now I do have to take the number 18 off temporarily to get that on. So we slip it over the red pulley and then over the large pulley. I'll just show you that. Can you see how they're connected together? And now we can put the number 18 elastic band back on. So now we've got two sets of pulleys. I hope the motor's going to behave itself now. Yep. And if I turn this round, can you see that the that the upper pulley now is going at a, a, a nice slow speed. Small to big slows things down. To get that speed we've had we've had to use two two pairs of pulleys. Um, so, to finish it off, we're going to complete the circuit. We're going to join two of the wires together permanently. 
I'll, uh, we can uh, glue the battery holder down. I think I'll tidy that wire up as well by sticking that, that connection down out of the way. And then we're going to create a switch here. Um, I like making my own switch. We need a, a piece of wood and two drawing pins. I'm going to tap these in. Just tap them halfway down. You might be able to push them down. Leave them standing up a little bit like a little mushroom. Then push the second drawing pin in very close to it but not quite touching. So you've got two drawing pins together like that. Um, these battery wires are made of lots of strains, so twist them together. Bend it into a hook. Hook it under the drawing pin. Bend it into a better hook. Under the drawing pin and tap that down. Now get the other wire. Bend that into a hook. Hook it under the second drawing pin and tap that down. Now we need to glue that in a position where we're going to reach it with a, a switch arm, so I think that's a good place to glue it. I think I'm going to glue it there actually so that it's out of the way of the ferris wheel. Otherwise as the ferris wheel goes around it's going to bang on your finger as you operate the switch. Um, to complete the circuit I'm just going to put a piece of metal on the end of here. I'm going to use a paper fastener, it's convenient. We could have wrapped it in cooking foil. Um, it's a, a strip of 3mm Corex that I've cut so it hinges. And I'm going to glue that down so that when it bridges the drawing pins it completes the circuit. I'm just going to glue that down. There we go. So that's the mechanism finished. Um, from now on it's basically um, decorating. Um, what I like to do is to glue four arms on here. <coughs> Excuse me. Try and get these um, symmetrical. One, two. I've done this with year uh, five and six. And um, after I've worked with them, I, I get the main mechanism done in about 90 minutes. And then they have follow-up lesson where they, they decorate their Ferris wheel ride. I won't have time to do much decorating in this video. But um, I will just show you how to make one of the chairs. We'll just see if that's, that's working fine. Still pretty fast, but not too fast. Um, Lots of different ways to make chairs for people to sit in. Um, the way I do it is I get a piece of uh, piece of Corex here and stick a piece of dowel through one of the flutes and if you can see that and then I glue a piece of jumbo straw onto the end of an arm. like this. Make sure it's sticking out at both sides. Uh, then, I, then once you've got it glued on you can always trim it back afterwards. Like that. There we are. And then you can slide that through there. And the reason we're doing this is that on a fairground ride I'm just going to stop it from falling out by using a small piece of PVC tubing pushed onto the end of the dowel so that it's free to rotate and the reason I'm doing this is uh, if you make a chair that's fixed then as it goes round it's going to turn upside down and the poor passengers will fall out so you have to have it so that it can rotate so that as it goes round it will always stay up the same way so I'm just going to glue um, a chair onto the bottom just cut this a bit smaller. We could glue a piece of uh, a piece of wood onto the end. Now 
and there we are, there's our there's one of the seats. I don't know if you can see that turning round and it's always staying the right way up. I haven't really given it a chance to the glue to dry yet. Um, I've got one that I've made earlier and there you can see all the uh, all the chairs are in place and I've put some plastic mirror on there as well just turn it around so that you can see the the mechanism in action as well so I hope you've, I've inspired you to have a go and make a ferris wheel model um, it could be something that could be controlled by um, a computer perhaps using an interface now there's a fault <laughs>